We have a conjunction, any, any conjunction. We're, we're in a kind of strange situation where, where we have a kind of meta planet, you know, something that that is uh, where the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It's it's not just like Venus and Mars. It's it's like what happens when these two come together and and energize each other and become indistinguishable from each other. That's that's it's the nature of a conjunction. It's a, it's a strange beast, and especially in this case where where there is a natural uh, polarity between Venus and and Mars. There's a, a useful trick as we begin to sort out the meaning of a Mars-Venus conjunction. A, a really good first step is to notice if one of those planets is more powerful than the other, which will often, often be the case. We know there are many, many ways that, that planets can, can increase in their amperage, so to speak, their impact upon you. For example, maybe the most obvious example, a, a Mars-Venus conjunction in Aries, with Mars ruling Aries, and, and Venus in so-called detriment in Aries. Obviously, the Aries energy kind of sides with the Mars and emphasizes the martial side of, of, of the equation. The Venus-Mars conjunction in Libra, you see where this is going. It's in the opposite direction. Um, if uh, either of those planets rules the ascendant and thus becomes the ruler of the chart, then of course it takes on a certain extra energy. And one of the, the examples that Edna gives here, we, we have the conjunction in, in, the, in Capricorn, which doesn't really favor either of them, but it's in the first house. And Mars has a kind of accidental rulership over the first house, gives the Mars a little extra buzz. Uh, the uh, ninth house Gemini, they're both kind of on foreign territory and everything else being equal, they're on unequal footing. Um, although if the person is a Libra or a Taurus, you know, they're going to be hearing the Venus energy a little more loudly. If the person is an Aries or a Scorpio, hearing the Mars energy a bit more loudly. What I'm saying is obviously very multifactorial. You have to, you know, have... Uh, uh, FCEA 101 under your belt pretty solidly. And then the judgments are not difficult. And it gives you a kind of leg up on the interpretation of which of these planets is going to be a little more forward than the other one. And that can often be really helpful as far as staying on top of the nuances of, of, of difference. Now, speaking sort of broadly about the, the integration of these two planets, uh, we all aspects are about integration. You've heard that line many times. And so we're trying to trying to bring these two energies together. Um, when we think of Venus, naturally, we're often thinking in terms of relationship and intimacy. Uh, it's very important to recognize that we're looking at all sorts of relationships with Venus. They don't have to be romantic or sexual. But when we're in the sexual category, which is naturally a popular category, and many of your clients are going to bring you questions of that of that nature, um, then then we have the tenderness of Venus and the passion of Mars trying to come together in a sort of integration. Venus makes love. In the sexual category, the term making love captures the spirit of Venus as, as a couple experiences tenderness and receptivity to each other through the mysteries of sexuality. Um, Mars is, is more unabashedly passionate, and it can be very loving, like think how much you have to trust somebody to be absolutely graphic and open with them about what works for you and what doesn't in, in bed. You know, it takes a lot of courage and a lot of faith to, to be willing to, to be that, that in tune with your animal nature and verbal about it. So Mars is not 
different from love. It's just a different kind of love, much more visceral, much more trusting the other person with your body. If you got a Mars-Venus conjunction, the kind of uh, intimate love that's going to work for you had better be passionate. It needs to be passionate. Now, everybody in principle, yeah, they favor passion. But in this situation, it's absolutely pressing and central. Now, a, a many an astrologer would say, uh-oh, a Mars-Venus conjunction, the, the god of war is lined up with the goddess of love. There's going to be nothing but conflict in your intimate life. That can be true. That can be an accurate prediction. It's obviously not the higher ground. It's not the soul's intention. But here's, here's a more human way of looking at it. Let's imagine a couple and they love each other. They're in a physical kind of sexual relationship with each other. Let's say they've been together a pretty long time. Let's say things are getting a little tired between them sexually. You know, not a rare situation. This can come from a lot of different reasons. But here's one possibility. There's something they're not dealing with that out of a commitment to keeping the peace, there is some subject which they have avoided talking about. And so there's perhaps a low level of anger or resentment building up between them, perhaps a higher level. All couples are going to experience this sooner or later. It's just what the price of hanging out with another monkey such as yourself, you know. So we're going to have that situation. Now, let's say one night the subject comes up and it's not pretty. Let's say they have a fight. One of them says the wrong thing. The other one overreacts. And pretty soon they're nin, 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 with each other, as couples do sometimes. And after two hours, let's skip the two hours. It's very unpleasant. So we go forward. And after two hours, we tune in. And it's like, I'm so glad we talked about this. Yeah, me too. Maybe one puts a hand on the other and says, are you okay? Feel how their rawness of honest soul connection has been restored by clearing the air. And here's the next step for all of us grown-ups. That night they go to bed together and they make love. They've had sex perhaps many times since this freeze came in. This is the night they make love. They have made themselves naked to each other emotionally by dealing with a conflict. And that leads to great sex. What do you need if you got a Mars-Venus conjunction? Great sex. And, and if you want to maintain it and not date for the rest of your life, you've got to learn how to handle conflict. And there's the, the evolutionary work, how to keep the passion alive. Now, I've gone sort of deeply into the subset where we're talking about uh, sexual intimacy, which, uh, of course, is a realistic thing to do, because as counselors, we're going to be dealing with that energy quite a lot. It presses at people so much. But if you got a Mars-Venus conjunction, your dearest friends are people who tell you the truth. There, there are people, uh, uh, pardon my so-called French here, but somebody who, who might say, you know, you were really an asshole last night. You know, your, your best friend who would use language like that. And, and it's like, it's okay to keep it clear and on the table and direct. You, you don't need to be careful around me is, is a basic Mars-Venus signal. Even if we're not in a physically intimate relationship, let's keep it straight and honest. You know, I'll stand up for you, I'll protect you, but I'll tell you the truth when I see it. So passionate intensity, this is the synthesis of the two. I could go on about this one. It's obviously a very rich subject, but uh, that, that'll, that'll, that'll get you started.